In this video, we'll demonstrate how to create a best fit line given some data. Make sure you've downloaded the curvefittingdata.mat file linked in the video description. This mat file contains data taken from an experiment which measured the current in a wire for various voltages. First, let's load in the data using the load command. After we run the code, we can see that two variables appear in the workspace, V and I. These stand for the applied voltages and the measured currents, respectively. Whenever you're given a data set, you should plot it on a standalone figure. This is a critical step because the shape of the data will determine what degree polynomial you should fit. Uncomment the plot commands and run the code to see what the data looks like. The data looks fairly linear, so let's try fitting a line or a first order polynomial. To do this, we can use the fit command. Here's the documentation. There are two outputs, fit object and gof. Fit object is the variable which contains the curve fit object. Gof, which stands for goodness of fit, contains a few statistics describing the quality of the fit, including the r squared value. Fit accepts three arguments, x, y, and fit type. X and Y are pretty self-explanatory, but if you read the documentation carefully, you'll see that they have to be column vectors. The third argument, fit type, is a string specifying the degree of the polynomial you want to fit. If we click on fit type, we scroll down. And then, if we click on the model names and equations page, we're directed to another help page with much more detail. If we want to fit a first order polynomial, we use the string poly1. Fit allows you to fit a polynomial curve up to a ninth degree polynomial. You can also create exponential fits, Fourier series fits, and much more, but that's not relevant to this example. If we go back to the fit documentation and scroll all the way down, there's another page called fit post processing. Here, we have a bunch of functions that will help post-process our data after we use the fit command. In particular, we'll need to use the cofvalues function to extract the polynomial coefficients of our fit. As with all unknown functions, read the documentation carefully and thoroughly. Let's jump back into MATLAB and write some code. Okay, let's use the fit and cofvalues functions to build our best fit first order line. Remember that fit object and goff are variables, so you can rename them to whatever you want. I'm just using these because it's what MATLAB uses. Also recall that the data vectors have to be input as column vectors, hence the two transposes. When we run the code, we see that fit object and goff appear in the workspace. If we inspect fit object, we see what the coefficients of our curve fit are. As you can see, the equation for our best fit line is y equals 2.808x minus 0 0.5922. In the context of our problem, this means that i equals 2.808v minus 0 0.5922. This is great, but we need a way to store p1 and p2 in a variable. This is where the cof values function comes in. Now the variable COFs contains the two coefficients produced by the curve fit. One way to assess the quality of your curve fit is by determining the R squared value, otherwise known as the coefficient of determination. An R squared close to zero indicates your model explains very little of the variability of the response data around its mean, which is bad. An R squared close to one indicates that the model explains almost all the variability of the response around its mean, which is good. However, you should always use multiple metrics to determine the goodness of fit. 
the R squared alone doesn't tell you enough information to truly understand the pros and cons of your selected model. But for sake of example, we'll only use the R squared here. How do we obtain it? If we double click on the goth variable, we see that it's a struct containing five fields. All five of these variables are related to the goodness of fit. The R squared is captured in this field, R squared. We can access this particular field as follows. Now the R squared value is captured in the variable R2. See the video description for more information on structs. We see that our R squared is extremely close to 1, which means we've probably chosen a good model. Once again, a high R squared doesn't guarantee a proper curve fit, but this is good enough for our example. Our curve fit is complete. We have the equation of the best fit line, and we've obtained a high R squared. Uncomment the plot commands to see the data and the best fit line on the same figure. Read the documentation if you don't understand what the plot command here is doing. Okay, the last step is to use the curve fit to predict what the current will be given an arbitrary voltage. After all, this is the point of a curve fit to predict the response given a random input. Let's say we want to predict the current if the voltage is 9 volts. If you were to do this by hand, you'd plug in V predict to the best fit line equation. MATLAB automatically does this with some special notation. I predict is a little under 25 amps. If we go back to the plot, we can verify this. When V equals 9, the best fit line dictates that the output current is a little under 25. Finally, uncomment the last two plot commands and run the code so we can show this point on the plot. This predicted point was plotted as a black square to differentiate it from the raw data, which are shown as blue dots. I hope this video helped you understand how to fit a curve from raw data points, extract the necessary values, and use the curve fit to predict the response to a random input. See you soon.